Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Kelly Renee Every Day, where I am here and dedicated to teach you the fundamentals of crochet. Now, I'm super excited about our next project, which is going to be creating this nice warm winter hat utilizing chunky yarn. It is a super cute project with a faux fur ball on the top, and it's surprisingly easy to make. So, um, so let's start getting into things. Here we are ready to start our hat called the Caitlin. Um, I call it the Caitlin because um, the very first one that I made, I actually made for my very sweet, amazing niece and her name's Caitlin. So, so I decided to call this hat, this design, the Caitlin. Now, um, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be essentially creating a large rectangle um, using the half double crochet. And our supplies that we're gonna be needing are going to be I chose um, Woolies Thick and Quick by Lion Brand Yarns, and this is a super bulky size. And the needle or the hook that we're gonna be using, now this suggests a, suggests a nine, but for my project I actually used a 10, okay? Um, whether it's a nine or a 10, they're very close in size, would not really make a significant difference. Um, I just happen to have a 10 handy, so that's what I used. Um, if you're curious about what the colors are here, or the color of the yarn is, this one's called seagrass. It's got some really pretty aqua blues, grays, and browns in it, and I really liked how it looked, especially with the faux fur pom-pom on top here. So um, I'm gonna be working mine today um, for this video with a solid color, same wool ease, and, um, and this color happens to be succulent, okay? This is a really pretty color as well. Now, something I do want to point out that for this hat, it took exactly one skein of yarn. I had very little left over. So this was really close, but which is, which is actually perfect. It's so nice when you don't have a lot left over because then you don't have to try to figure out what to do with the, the leftover yarn. But just know that um, this took exactly one skein of the multicolor. The multis for um, this brand and, and many others always have a little bit less yarn on them. So this has this is five ounces with 87 yards where the solid color is actually six ounces and 106 yards. So there'll be plenty um, for our hat with this one. Now, additionally, we have um, faux fur pom-poms. So whatever color that you think would go with, I'm kind of leaning towards the tan, I think, with this one when I make this one, but the black would be super cute too. So a faux fur pom-pom, a scissors, um, I thought I had a yarn needle here. <laughs> oh, here it is. A yarn needle to weave in our ends. And then we're also going to need a tape measure because really the tape measure is actually going to be the most important part of determining, um, you know, if we're, if we're done or not. Additionally, I use baby powder on my hands to help the yarn kind of slip over. When I've got a little bit larger gauge yarn like this, um, it's kind of, sometimes like got, it tugs a little bit on my hands. So, so the, the, um, baby powder helps a little bit. So um, before we start working our stitches, I just wanna give you a little bit better idea of the process we're gonna go through. And um, as I've said before, rectangles can get us a long way. <laughs> I feel like I make rectangles as a basis for a lot of the projects I do. So rectangles, if you've been following along, learning how to crochet, I really started with um, you know, showing, showing on this channel how to make a couple different washcloths and washcloths are rectangles. And it's a great place to you know, start with practicing stitches and then have something that you can use afterwards. I think a hat is a really fun project then for the absolute beginner as well, because again, we can make a simple rectangle. We can continue to practice the stitches that are very foundational to crochet. And this one's gonna be the half double crochet. And you can have a really beautiful um, product that you can be really proud to wear. So this is gonna be the size of the rectangle that we're gonna make. So let's do some measurements here. So, um, so we are going to have our rectangle be about 12 inches long, okay? That means that our foundational chain is gonna to have to be 12 inches long. Now this one, I happen to chain 27, and then, I, and then when I turned, each one of my rows here ends up having 25 stitches on it. And then what I did was the number of rows here, not so much, I, I didn't even count the number of rows, but the length that I made this is about 16 inches long. Now, 
this length is going to be actually determined and calculated based off the diameter. So if you take this and you wrap it around the person's or your own head that you want that you want to wear this, I measured the circumference of my head to be 21 inches. That is a standard size. I didn't realize that until I started kind of investigating a little bit. So once I know my, my size of the head that you're going to be putting this on, so that's a very average adult size head, 21 inches, you subtract five inches, okay? And we subtract five inches because this, because of the ridges that we're going to be creating, this is very stretchy. And crochet has that tendency to stretch out over time because it's it's loopy, okay? It's just um, it's just the way that it is. So um, so subtracting off five inches, so 21 minus five is 16 inches long. So then not so much number, you know, figuring out how many, uh, how many rows there are, it's really measuring that length. Now, this is done with super bulky yarn. So this diameter of this yarn, okay, is, is, you know, requiring that larger hook, okay? It's not a small hook. I wanna show you, I created this hat, same pattern, except it's a much thinner yarn. It's kind of like a standard gauge yarn. So this was just smaller gauge yarn, smaller diameter yarn, smaller hook, and the only difference is, is that I needed more rows to get the very same result, okay? So um, so it's all about the height <laughs> being 12 inches and the length, oopsie, I got this the wrong way, uh, 12 inches, 12 inches by, in this case, 16 or five minus the circumference of your head, okay? So um, so whether it's, you know, the number of rows, the number of chains doesn't matter anymore. You're just gonna try to achieve, you're gonna get to that point where you achieve those numbers, okay? So I'm gonna fold this up. We'll bring this back a little bit later. And what we're gonna do now is we are gonna get started by getting our yarn on our hook. I just gotta find the end of my yarn. Here it is, <laughs> here it is. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so that we can get a good look at how to do this, okay? So again, this is, I'm still um, doing this in the Learn to Crochet series. And, and so we're gonna take this kind of slow, okay? Um, if you wanted to kind of check back on some other videos on my channel, you're gonna notice that we do have uh, specific videos dedicated to the slip knot, for instance, and the half double crochet. So um, so if you needed some extra practice or some, some more details, uh, feel free to go back to those um, videos and I will link those down below. So, um, so what I do for getting my, my yarn on my hook with the slip knot, I simply take um, my hand, I need a little bit of a tail here, and I make it about the length of my hand. So then I grab it here, and then I take two fingers on my opposite hand, I wrap around once and a half, and then I bring up between here. I then put my hook through, okay, and I kind of hold this in place, I bring my fingers out, and then I've got these two tails. I pull the two tails until I get this snug around my, um, my uh, hook. Now, it's not tight on my hook, it's able to move back and forth, and then I can I can pull this one to kind of snug it up if I need to. Okay, so that's how we get our our yarn on a hook. I'll do it one more time. Take a length about the length of my hand. I'm going to go around once and a half. Pull up that loop. Stick my my um, hook through there. Pull my fingers out. Pull the two tails here. Okay, and then I'm going to take the the free end and I'm gonna pull it up so that it snugs on, so that it's loosely on there. Now, the diameter of the hook is important because that sets the size of the loop. So the larger, thicker, bulkier the yarn is, the larger the hook is going to be, okay? The smaller, the thinner the yarn is, for instance, if we're working with like a, um, you'll notice that we have some, some cotton yarn here, then our, um, hook is going to be much smaller, okay, because the the diameter of that yarn is smaller. So that's why on the band, and I have this one off of it. That's why on the band, it's always going to give you a suggestion for what is the size of the hook that you're going to need. The other one here is for a knitting needle. This is a crochet hook. So, like I said, that's always a good place to start, but then you can always adjust from there as well. 
Okay, so now that I have my, um, my yarn on my hook, I am now going to kind of hold my work so that the yarn can um, go into um, my project. So, um, so it really kind of sets what we call the tension of the yarn as I start to work it. So I am going to take my index finger, I'm gonna wrap around twice, I'm gonna curl my bottom fingers over, my middle finger goes on the back side of my hook here, and then my thumb in the front, okay? So now what we're gonna do is I have the hook facing me, I'm holding the hook, there's two little flats front and back, and I take my thumb and my um, middle finger on the back side, and then I usually kind of hold my um, hook kind of with my index finger. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hook and I'm going to twist it underneath, and it, it kind of pulls it through. Do you see how it's kind of coming off my fingers now? And I turn it over so that now I, I wanna pull that yarn through my, through my loop that was on my hook. Now I've got, I'm gonna push my um, hook back through there, and now I've got this loop over the top of my hook. Now I wanna pull this loop back to the largest portion of my hook here because this is what sets the size of the loop so that the next time I go around and I pull in, I'm gonna be able to get my hook through. Do not tighten up down here. This is gonna be much too tight and you won't get through. So you've gotta bring it back so that the loop is set to this size. So now I'm gonna yarn, we call this yarning over, okay? I'm gonna twist my, my um, hook down and I'm gonna pull it through that loop and then I'm gonna bring that loop up onto the barrel of my, of my hook, and I'm gonna to continue to do the same thing. This is called chains, okay? This is the chain stitch, the chain stitch, okay? I'm gonna to continue to pull through. Now, you're gonna notice that when I look here, I created what, what seems to be a braid, right? It looks just like a braid, or we call these Vs in crochet. So I've got one, two, three, four stitches that I created, and this is the loop, okay? I don't count the loop as a stitch. What the loop is coming up through is a stitch. So I've got one, two, three, four, okay? And I'm gonna make 27, so I'm gonna go back on here, finger in the back, thumb in the front, holding my needle like, kind of like a knife if you would, and I'm gonna continue. So I'm gonna go five, six, seven, eight, hold on, I gotta kinda straighten this out, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27, okay? So now, this is where, we, well, this is where we're gonna test. We're gonna see how long did we get. So again, a lot of variation here in the length here. So 27 is, is where I'm gonna start. That's what I used for that last, that last um, hat that I created or that rectangle that we're gonna be using later. So as I look here, it's perfect. It's, it's 12 inches long. That's exactly where I wanna be. Now again, it's not wrong if you if you are not quite there. If you're if you're and and the tendency of a of a beginner crochet is to be a little tight on your tension. So if you're a little shy, do a couple more rows or a couple more chains, no problem. Okay, and that's the beauty of this project. Okay, it's not an exact science and crochet really isn't. Okay, crochet really isn't. That's what I kind of like about it. All right, so I'm gonna get back my um, my yarn back on my finger here, twirl around. Got my fingers in, my, my uh, middle finger in the back, my thumb in the front. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna half double crochet in the second chain from my hook. So my hook is in here. The first chain is where the hook is coming through. So we count this one right here as our first chain. This is our second chain right here, okay? Now, the half double crochet requires us to yarn over before we go into our work. Okay, so I'm gonna yarn over and I'm going to then turn over and I'm gonna, notice how I'm kind of holding it in place here. And I'm gonna go into that chain, okay? And then I'm going to yarn over and I'm gonna pull that through and up, okay? 
I've got three loops on my hook. I have the one that I yarned over with and then the one that I just pulled up. Okay, I've got three on. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure that all three are in that larger part of my hook so it sets that size. And now I'm gonna yarn over one more time and I'm gonna pull through all three loops. Half double crochet, <laughs> okay? Let's do it again. I've got one, one loop on my, on my hook right now. I'm gonna yarn over before I even go in. And now I'm gonna look. Okay, my next chain is right here. I'm gonna go into that chain, okay? And then I'm going to yarn over, pull, and, you'll, and notice how I'm kind of turning because naturally what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to kind of go underneath there, okay? And I'm gonna pull up that loop so then my hook is, is at the top now again. And then I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna I'm gonna twist it down so I can pull it all the way through all three. And now I'm back to only one, one loop on my hook. That means I'm done with my stitch. So that was a half double crochet. Let's do it again. Yarn over, go into my next chain, yarn over, rotate it, <clears throat> pull it through. I've got three loops, okay? All of them on the largest part of my barrel here. I'm gonna yarn over again and pull through all three. Pull through all three. Yarn over, go back in to the next stitch, the next chain. Yarn over, pull up that loop, pull up that loop. I've got three on. Now I'm gonna yarn over one more time and pull through all three. Okay, let's do one more, at least one more, maybe two more. Yarn over, I'm gonna push in, yarn over, pull up that loop, I've got three on. Yarn over, I'm gonna pull all the way through. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. Yarn over, go into my next chain. Okay, yarn over, pull through. I got three on my hook. Yarn over, pull all the way through. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna take my hook out here and let's look at what we have. So you'll notice that it looks like I've got, I'm gonna count them. Okay, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, this is gonna be the top of that half double crochet. There's our Vs, okay? There's our Vs, that's the classic crochet V, all right? And then we're gonna continue on down here, okay, all the way till the end. And we're gonna fill that with half double crochets. Now, what I'm gonna have you do is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue on here and when the, when the video starts back up, I am going to be about two stitches from the end, two chains from the end, and then we're gonna turn the work together. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of time. I suggest that you kind of stop the video here for a little bit, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue on over here, and then we'll, we'll turn our work and we'll, we'll work back the other way. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit. Here we are at the very end. So I'm just about ready to turn. I've got two more chains to finish here. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm gonna get this back on and I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna go into my very next chain here, yarn back over, pull up my three loops on my hook, yarn over and pull all the way through. And then I'm gonna yarn over Put it, go in the very last chain, yarn over, pull up that third loop, yarn over, and then pull all the way through. Now I've got my established base here, okay? And half double crochets is what we're gonna continue to do. So it's not a bad idea to just do a quick um, check on our length, and sure enough, we're about 12 and a half, but um, that's perfect. Okay. Remember it's about, it's not an exact science. And that's the beauty of, I think the beauty of, um, crochet is that we will always have and one of a kind and, um, and, and then it's, it's going to always be something that's special. So, um, so what we're going to do here now is we need to, um, turn our work. Okay. So I'm going to get my fingers back in place here and we're going to chain two. We're gonna chain two and then we're gonna turn. So on a half double crochet, we go one, two, 
and this sets the height. So, so you'll notice that there's a height here when we create this chain. And, and when we turn, we need to kind of set the height for the next row. So now I'm going to turn my work and I simply just turn it around. Okay. And now, as we had seen earlier, you'll notice that the chain, the, the top of our stitch is right here as we go back. Okay. And those are those V's again. Those are those classic V's we are going to now when you work a standard half double crochet onto the next row, you will normally go underneath the two V's when you go into the work. Okay. But we instead are going to go into the top of the stitch and only in the back loop. So you'll notice that we have this V here. The front loop is the one that's closest to you. The back loop is the one that's further away. We are going to be working our half double crochet in the back loop all the way across. That's what creates the ridges. Okay. So I'm going to put my hook back into my loop here at the top of my, um, my two chains that I just created and I'm going to start half double crocheting and I'm going to go into that space where the back loop is. So I'm going to yarn over first. So I'm going to create the same stitch yarn over, go into that back loop, yarn over, pull up three on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the next one, the next stitch that I have here. Okay. I'm going to go into the back loop. Okay. So at the very top here, here's my front loop. Here's my back loop. Yarn over, go into that back loop yarn over, pull up for three on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay. Yarn over. I'm going to go into the back loop, yarn over, pull up three on yarn over, pull through all three. Okay. So this is where we can start to see how the, the second row here is set back because we haven't gone into the into the front loop normally we would go underneath for a standard stitch but this is a variation on it where we get this ridging effect this up and down and we are just going into that back loop it makes it kind of really pretty okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of twist in here again yarn over and we're going in to this space right here into the v back loop only yarn over pull up i've got three on yarn over pull through all three yarn over back loop yarn over three on yarn over pull through all three and we're going to continue to do that all the way across all the way across yarn over back loop yarn over all three yarn over back loop yarn over all three at that right pretty and and what's really nice about using bulky yarn and and that's one reason I, I do like it um, that hat that I that I showed you takes about an hour and a half to make because because you you're making large you just make thicker larger stitches okay and you you it, like it says on there it's quick and thick <laughs> quick and thick or thick and quick, one of the two, yeah. Yarn over, okay, you see your V, back loop. Yarn over, three on, pull all the way through. Yarn over, back loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay. Yarn over, back loop, right here. Yarn over, three, pull through all three. So good. So again, let's look at the top of our stitch there. There's our V. We're going to go into the back loop. So we start by yarning over, go into the back loop, yarn over, pull up three, yarn over, pull through all three. So good. Yarn over, back loop, yarn over, pull up, yarn over through all three. And we're going to continue until we get to the very end. I don't have much to go here. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with you. Yarn over, go in, yarn over, all three. 
yarn over, go in back loop, yarn over, we got three, yarn over one more time, pull through all three. Yeah, this is, this is so fun to make. Like I said, um, I really like, especially for beginners, um, to do projects like this because, okay, it's just one stitch, but gosh, you get such good practice at it and you start to become, you know, really smooth and efficient and, um, and then you've got something that, that you can wear. <laughs> I mean, what's better than having a hat, especially in the middle of winter in Wisconsin and, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a fun, a fun thing to make. And, or if you want to make a gift for somebody now. We're on our very last stitch here. There is one more little V here. Don't forget about the V. The very last V is kind of at an angle here. So we're gonna yarn over one more back loop of that last V, yarn over, and we're through, okay? If you don't do that, you're gonna have a little end sticking out. And you're gonna be like, wait a second. And it's not a bad idea to count our stitches, okay? I, I, I probably should have done that before. So we're gonna go to the top of our stitch here and we're just gonna count our V's back. So, so if we look, maybe I'll point with this. We're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That's exactly what I thought we would have. Perfect. Okay. So there we have it, um, 25 stitches back and forth. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, chain two, and we're gonna turn our work. So let's do that one more time so we can see that. And we're going to um, get our yarn on our hands here, back in our loop, one, two. Okay, remember we, that's setting the height of the next row, if you would, because that's how high that stitch is gonna be. We're gonna turn our work, and we're gonna look at the top again, and we're going to yarn over, and right at the base here, this very first V, we're gonna go in there, back loop, yarn over, three loops, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, next back loop of that V, yarn over, pull through. Okay, so again, here's our V. We're going in the back loop only, right here. We're not going underneath both Vs, we're going in the back loop only. So if you followed the washcloth, my half double crochet washcloth, um, we went in the bottom of both of them, okay? And it made the work flat, okay? This, the ridging effect is because we're going in that back loop. Yarn over, go in that back loop, yarn over, pull up three, yarn over, through all three. Yarn over, back loop, yarn over, yarn over again, and pull through. All right, and now you're just gonna continue to do this back and forth, back and forth until you get a rectangle that is going to be five inches less than the circumference of the head <laughs> that you wanna put it on. So if you measure your own head, if you make this for yourself and you measure your own head and you're just gonna subtract five inches, okay? Mine was 21. <laughs> I'm very standard, <laughs> I found out. Very standard, okay. And now you're going to then long enough so that you have five inches minus whatever your number is. I, I think I pulled mine apart. I know before when it was laying nice and flat. So about 16 inches, okay, 16 inches. And again, you don't wanna pull this apart because that's, 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 the, um, that's kind of the deal. We want, it to, we want it to have a nice stretch to it and, um, and then be nice and soft, okay? So, um, because if we pull it apart to try to get to our number, well then that's less that's less like stretchiness that we're gonna have when we put it on our head and it could be kind of tight that way. So you want it to be just like naturally sitting here. Okay, so here we are. I've got my I've got my length, I've got my full rectangle. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna close it up. So we are going to close this up. And it really doesn't matter which way you go because you're gonna notice that front to back, it looks exactly the same. So whether you go one way or the other, Truly, it doesn't matter, okay? So now we're going to, where did my hook go? That's weird. Oh, here it is, it's on the end of my, my work. So I'm putting my hook in here, all right? And here is my, my yarn, if you would, from, um, from my edge. So 
this guy right here, I'm just gonna snug this up. This is from my, my base chain and I'm gonna weave that in afterwards, okay? I'm not gonna worry about it really for, um, for this video's sake. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are gonna do what they call a, um, a slip stitch, okay? So a slip stitch is very, very simple. So, so right now you'll notice that I just have my, um, my loop from, from my original okay and that's that's the very end and I'm gonna be working in this direction like I normally do okay and this little tail I'm just gonna kind of like not worry about it. I'm gonna put it underneath here and I'm going to now I'm going to um, take my work and I'm going to take uh, my um, I'm gonna do one chain and I'm gonna take my um, hook I'm gonna go in underneath both so you've got my V here. Here's the top of my last half double crochet. I'm gonna go in underneath both. And then I'm gonna go over to the other side and then that first chain that was created, I'm gonna go underneath there, okay? So I'm kind of like matching these up if you would. And then I'm going to yarn over and I'm gonna pull through and pull through that original loop that was on my chain. That's it. Now I'm gonna go back underneath the first V, okay, from my half double crochet, and I'm gonna go in the next chain on that, that foundation row. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna pull through, pull through what's on my, on my um, hook, and that's a slip stitch. So there's really no yarning over except pulling through as we do. So I'm gonna go underneath again, my next chain, I'm gonna, I guess this is one yarn over, I'm gonna pull through, and pull through all right and you're gonna notice that there's this little V in the back of you again that um, that's kind of trailing and joining everything together so I'm gonna go underneath I'm gonna go underneath the chain pull yarn over pull through and pull through okay underneath my chain underneath there pull through pull through underneath my V, underneath my chain, and again, kind of lining these up, yarn over, pull through, pull through. And notice that right in back of me, it's all coming together. And what's what's neat about it is it, it blends right in. It looks just like the rest of the stitches. That's what's beautiful about it. So it, it joins it together really nicely. So I'm gonna, got my loop on, I'm gonna go underneath my V into my chain, yarn over pull through and pull through go under my V into my chain yarn over pull through and pull through we're going to continue to do this all the way to the end okay it's a little bit longer video <laughs> but that's okay because I want to make sure that as you're working this, you can kind of see over and over again what to do. Okay, So under that V, into the chain, pull over, pull through, pull through. Under the V, into the chain, pull over and through. Under the V, into the chain, pull over and through. We're getting there, <laughs> getting close to the end. All right. Okay, look at that, it's lining up really nicely at the end here. go okay all right so now what I've done is as I said here is where we've joined this all together with that slip stitch so it looks really nice it blends in and now I've got this very last um, 
um, item on my hook. So I've got this kind of a, a length here. Now I cut this off um, just for the purposes of, you probably will still have this on your ball, which is totally fine. But now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna pull and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a, a chain, I'm gonna, uh, you know, through here and I'm gonna pull this all the way through, okay? And then I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna stick this back in there. I'm gonna wrap it back around to kind of do like if you would, I don't know, a double knot, okay? So that when we when we tie this off, it's it's a knot and it won't come apart. Okay? So I've got that. All right. So now I've got this tube, okay? And and this is where I kind of pick. Like, is there a is there a side that looks better than the other? Because this is gonna be the edge that is going to, if you would be my um, at my bottom so I guess it really doesn't matter which side it is they look they both look they both look fine <laughs> as I look here so what I'm gonna do is since this has the longer tail on it I'm just gonna have this at the top okay at the top and then this I can weave in um, later so I am going to now go to my yarn needle and I'm gonna cut off this end so it's nice and even and I am going to get my yarn needle in here okay now you could do this with your crochet hook if you wanted to but I just find it's a little bit more efficient and faster with my with my yarn needle okay so um, so now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna cinch this top together okay so we're just gonna go in and out this is very crude in and out as we go and all this is going to do is serve to cinch the top together. So we aren't going stitch by stitch. We're kind of making it pretty wide so that um, as we go around the outside here and we go in and out, um, we're going to be able to pull it at the end and it's all going to gather. Okay. You're going to be amazed at how totally simple this is. And it's, and it's a good looking cute hat. I love it. Um, I think it's kind of trendy, especially by adding the faux fur uh, pom pom at the top. It just kind of brings it, I don't know, gives a little style and uh, makes it a little more modern looking. But you don't have to put a, 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 a faux fur pom pom on the top. You could just leave it, you know, as is. So I'm back here at the beginning, pretty close to the beginning here. And, um, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Okay, it's all together now at the top. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this like towards the inside, or I'm going to kind of put it around here so that it... Now again, I guess some sometimes when you're doing crochet work, there is a definite like front or a back to it. And um, in this case, there is not. It looks exactly the same on the inside as it does on the outside. Um, so whether we gather this and we tie it on the top here, or if we turn it inside out and do the same thing, it really is not gonna make a difference to the look of the hat. So that's kind of nice about this, about this design as well. You don't have to be so worried about inside, outside. Okay, now <laughs> we are ready to, um, uh, to kind of, get things going. I'm going to I'm going to make one more knot here just to ensure that it doesn't come apart because I don't know. You don't want it to come apart, right? Okay. So I'm going to leave it just like that. Now, this is going to end up being um, I'm going to be covering this with my my faux fur pom-pom, but it's not a bad idea to just pull this through into the inside so that we have our ed edge on the inside. So I'm just gonna um, kind of go in the inside here and cut this off short. Okay. okay, so we're done with that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our pom-pom. And this is where you get the choice. So you find, you know, whatever pom-pom you think is like super cute. I kind of think the brown is gonna be pretty on here. I like this brown on here. The black would be nice too. Either, truly a personal preference. I'm just gonna kind of push this around. I got these on Amazon and they came like super flat. So I've been like puffing it up, but once you puff it up a little bit and it also has this little 
this little um, elastic on the inside as well. So now because of the nature of this, uh, a yarn needle is pretty blunt at the end. So when I put my my um, my pom pom on, I do need a needle that's going to be a little bit more have the ability to like stick in there, and the yarn needle just doesn't quite do it. Additionally, I'm going to use yarn that is a little bit thinner to put it on. So I'm going to kind of grab a length here of this um, cotton yarn that I have, and we are going to get this on. Now this is more of a darning needle, okay? So like I said, it's it's got a sharper um, point to it so that we can kind of get through. Okay, there we go. Just has to have a needle large enough to get the, the yarn through, okay? All right, now I'm not going to use this elastic because if we would, it would kind of go around on there. I want it to be nice and firm on here. So I'm gonna go in a little bit to the to the left and then go to the side and then push through, okay? And then um, pull so that it's a little bit more stable on, on, um, on the hat. Pull this through. Um, sometimes they come and some people put a, um, a snap on it. Um, but then you just run the risk of it. it that's not a bad idea. Um, I just don't do it because then they kind of flop around. So, so you notice how I've got a little bit of a distance between here because I put it on. And so then now I'm going to do the very same thing on the top of the hat. I'm not going to go down the center. I'm going to go like through one side here. And I'm going to pull this one side through. Okay. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to um, go on the other side and pull that side through. Okay. And then, and this side I'm just going to pull with my crochet hook. I'm just going to pull it forward through. Okay. And now I'm going to kind of go on the inside here. And all we're going to do is tie it a couple times and it's going to be on. There we go. That's one. Two and we'll do three for good measure. Okay, and then I'm just gonna cut it off short. Okay, look at this, <laughs> how cute that is. Okay, look at, and now here is our hat. Now the very last step that we do need to do, and I guess we might as well um, do that right here, is we do need to weave in those little ends at the very end here. So let me get this stuff out of the way. We're going to weave this in. I'm going to cut off the end here. See if we can get it in. And then we're almost done. We're going to have a beautiful hat. So excited. Like I said, this is such a great um, beginner hat because. Uh, and then I'm just gonna kind of come back in this direction. And I like to kind of weave in and out in one direction all the way up. And it's completely invisible, completely invisible. And then I usually tie it off on the inside here a little bit further. And then I'm gonna go down. And this was on the row that I actually did the uh, the slip stitch on. Okay. Let's make sure. And I'm going to use my needle. I got a little bit short here. That's okay. It's all about <laughs> solutions. And I like to pull through. I like to twist it around twice to make more of a knot. And once I do that, I can cut it off. There we go. Okay, hat complete. Look at that. I can push it over. Here's my brim. I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit for you. Isn't it look amazing? So now we've got a beautiful, warm, 
Caitlin hat that you get to enjoy this winter. Okay, I hope you enjoyed doing that. Truly, it's a, a great absolute beginner project uh, to practice your half double crochet in the back loop and, um, and then making a fun project that'll keep you warm. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. If you, if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel and if you would like to share it with your friends, that would be awesome too. Um, until our next project, have a wonderful day.